News. The deadly winter weather emergency unfolding across Texas and much of the South is becoming even more dangerous tonight, with millions of Americans heading into another night of brutal cold without heat, power, or clean water. At least 140 cases of carbon monoxide poisoning in Houston alone. Unlike those northern states, structures are not built to uh, withstand these temperatures here, uh, nor are people uh, as prepared to deal with them when they arrived in force with this massive winter system. This morning, the humanitarian crisis in Texas is accelerating. Millions still without power or water. What is going on right now is completely unacceptable. How can we buy water? We don't even have power. Been without power for 60 hours now. Officials say this week there have been more customers in Texas without power than there were during Hurricane Harvey. So I know I haven't uploaded a video in a really, really long time, but it's been a, an eventful two weeks to say the least. As you guys know, uh, Texas has had a pretty hard time uh, recently. You know, we had two historical winter storms hit us in the same week. We had power outages for days on end and freezing temperatures, no water. You know, they even ended up shutting off the gas for most people. Firewood was scarce. It really just was a horrible situation uh, for Texas and, you know, definitely a horrible situation for hobbyists here. I know you guys have wanted to hear what my experience was like, so I'm going to tell you the little story of what happened to me and my tank during this time. Basically, I had no power for four days. Yeah, four days. Okay, four days. That's a really long time to not have power. And it's like an eternity to not have power with a reef tank. So it really wasn't a fun experience to say the least. The day before the storm, I really didn't expect much to come from this storm. I mean, we've had snow hit Texas in the past. In the worst case that I remember, it's just resulted in a week, you know, not traveling anywhere. But I would have never thought that it would cause power outages and all of the stuff that we experienced. So when they warned us about the storm before, completely underestimated what was going to happen. The extent of my preparation was minimal. I have a generator that was kind of impulse purchase. I mean, I never would have thought I'd actually have to use it ever. And since I bought it, it's been sitting in my garage. I don't even really know how to set up this thing. So it's just been sitting there. The night before the storm, I figured, hey, might as well, you know, get a little gas can from the gas station, you know, those little guys, and um, fill it up with gas just for the heck of it. I mean, in my head, I was thinking there, it's not gonna come down to me having to use a generator whatsoever, right? I filled up gas in my car, dripped the pipes in this house and the house that I just closed on three days prior, and that was it. You know, that was it. I thought I was pretty well prepared for this little snowstorm that's gonna pass. You know, I mean, we've had snow before and it wasn't ever a big deal. So it was around 2 a.m. when they started doing these rolling blackouts as they call them. Really, it was 15 minutes of power and then hours without. Um, at least that's how it started. So when I woke up, I went downstairs. I checked the tank, cold, cold. I mean, really, really cold to the touch, you know? Checked the temperature and it was 55, y'all. It was 55. And now at this point, the electricity hasn't been on for hours. So I'm freaking out. Holstein is like gripping onto dear life. I'm actively watching my dear Holstein die. My corals are obviously all angry. I'm freaking out. I don't know what to do. So what I ended up doing is I wrapped the tank with blankets all around and secured it with some pins. And luckily I have a gas stove. Otherwise I would have been really screwed at this point. What I ended up doing is I got a pan out, put some knives down and then got the little um, coral carriers, the little plastic carriers. I had three of them and I would take tank water from the tank, pop it on the stove, cycle it back, you know, wait for the other one to warm up and just keep cycling them like that back and forth, back and forth for hours. I moved the fish from my quarantine into this tank so I could just work on keeping one tank warm. I really wanted to introduce the new additions to the quarantine tank in a cool way, but I guess this is their introduction. They were really, yeah, they were struggling. My two 
little new additions to my quarantine tank. So I ended up moving them into this tank and I was freaking out because I realized I don't have any kind of fish container, like any kind of fish box. So what I ended up doing is drilling holes in a, one of those coral containers, popping them in there and just, you know, hoping that they'll, you know, be happy there in such confined quarters, which they ended up being okay with. Cycling the water back and forth, I was doing this for hours. I managed to get the temperature up in my tank to about, ooh, like 70, maybe like 68-ish. At this point in time, my deer generator was not wanting to turn on. It was, it was not having it. I haven't used that generator since we got it. So it's just been sitting in the garage. And uh, yeah, it was a mission trying to get that thing to finally work. It took hours. Finally, it managed a little, you know, the motor managed to start running a little bit. So put it outside, managed to run an extension cord into the tank and uh, managed to get that temperature back up. So yay, I had the best ideal situation, right? But even though I had a generator, that did not mean that the nightmare was over by any means. Because once my little tiny gas canister ran out of gas, the mission now was how the heck am I gonna find more gas? Got on the roads, the roads were completely iced over. It was just a struggle even trying to make it down my street. It was pretty much impossible to drive without seriously like spinning out a couple times, you know? And the issue is trying to hunt for gas stations that actually had gas because half of them were not functioning due to the power outage. And then the other half were quickly running out of gas. So managed to get some gas to last through the night. The electricity at this point has been off for hours and it would just come on for 15 minute intervals, two minute intervals, 30 minute intervals, eight hours of no power to 15 minutes of power. So it was incredibly difficult and exhausting. Constantly have to wake up, you know, for that 15 minutes of power, you know, charge the phones, try to do what you can during that time period to make the most of the electricity. Managed to get some gas to last the next day, but unfortunately had to uh, go back again the next day to get more and lo and behold there is no gas to be found <laughs> there's no gas to be found I was definitely freaking out at this point definitely freaking out because what use is a generator if you don't have any gas to power it luckily managed to finally find some gas however the gas station attendant informed that there was only like 30 minutes left of gas I mean they were running on the last 10%. This was the only gas station anywhere near me at this point that would have anything. Sprung into action, went to Home Depot a little bit further away, gathered the last remaining gas canisters I could find. The power goes off in Home Depot. It's like a very apocalyptic experience at this point. Managed to go back to the gas station and get gas, enough gas to last from that Monday till Friday. So at this point I was feeling a lot better. However, the situation still sucked. Power was off for eight, nine, 10 hours at a time just to be on for 15 minutes. It was really rough, especially because the temperature in the house was absurdly cold. It got to the 40s inside this room. Incredibly difficult to sleep and do anything when you can see your breath in your house. Luckily, in addition to the gas stove, I also have a gas fireplace, which definitely saved me. Made a little nest by the fireplace, gathered all my animals, you know, made it through with this makeshift tent thing for, you know, for five days and just not really getting much sleep, just checking on the tank in general. I mean, it's so stressful knowing that the temperature could drop any second. Either the generator runs out of gas or stops working and they shut off our gas. Like was it was a situation with a lot of people. I mean, it was, it was really tough to go through it. And I had one of the better situations here. Another thing that I, I really didn't anticipate was just how much water evaporated from this guy during those uh, four days because it was so, cold in here I could see your breath in here so obviously the tank was evaporating super quickly just out of sheer luck I had some fresh water you know RODI fresh water on hand so managed to warm that up and it was really just by the nick of time that by the time we got power on again was when I actually officially ran out of our DI water so and to make matters worse the pipes in the house that I closed on three or four days prior burst so uh incredible mess to deal with in that respect which really sucks but you know what can you do even 
though it was a horrible situation, I definitely had the better experience than a lot of other hobbyists. To say that I had a generator was pure luck. I mean, I've always joked about that generator since I got it that, you know, why did I even get this? Because I'm never going to use it. The power never goes out here. I've never had it go out, especially for longer than, you know, a few hours. And our weather here, even though we've gotten snow in the past, we would have never anticipated this much of an event, this, this cold of temperatures, and definitely not for our water and our electricity to completely just shut down during this time. So it's not exactly that we were unprepared, but just that this was so out of left field that there was really no way that anybody could have anticipated this. In terms of the tank, I really faced minimal loss. Initially after the storm, I thought I was all in the clear, all good to go. There was no loss. My fish were fine. All my corals were alive. So I thought I, uh, I made it victorious through the storm. But unfortunately, since that time, I have three very, very angry acros and one acro that I really don't expect will make it. SPS kind of shows the damage from significant events a few weeks later. So it's unfortunate, but really, you know, three or four acros in this kind of event is, you know, I'll, I mean, I'll take it. You know, so the tank is in great spirits uh, considering all this craziness. I'm going to be giving a proper update in my next video to show you guys the new coral additions I've added as well as my little new quarantine fishies here. But generally speaking, everybody is doing really well considering the situation. One of the acros that was affected was my dance, Millie dance. I know I'm so sad. As you can see some of its little tissue flesh here here is coming off. I mean, it's really just very unhappy. I'm keeping an eye out on this guy in the days to come and worst case scenario, just chop off that tip right there. Hopefully he should make a good recovery. I believe in him. A few of the other acros that have been affected, this little green guy here, I don't know if this is going to zoom in, but this this little green guy, um, he's just not showing that much polyp extension. He's, he's just a little angry. I don't know if that's due to maybe the Montes next to him encroaching on him, which I do have to frag regardless. He's not very happy, but I do believe he will make a successful comeback. Uh, the other corals that have been affected were mainly the ones, I mean, all of them were just the ones on the sledge, really. But I have to admit that these corals here have been upset for a very, very long time, even before the storm, because this Aptasia is just growing larger and larger and larger. At this point, my Bergia nudies are not even gonna make a dent in this, so I'm going to be thinking about using f -Aptasia to get rid of these guys. However, I'm going to have to get help from someone because I am truly a master of spreading Aptasia. But this little acro right here is one of the ones affected. Oh my gosh, look at that poor thing surrounded by all this Aptasia. It's so bad. I feel that he will make a come through. Honestly, I just need to get this Aptasia situation sorted like weeks ago. But um, I mean, I, I feel like he's, he's the little acro that can, you know, like survive. But yeah, we'll see. I will update you guys in the next video. Also, this poor stick right here. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if you can see because the camera does not want to focus. He, I, I don't even want to say angry at this point. I really don't think this guy's going to come back. Um, unfortunately, he has completely gone white. Pretty much a goner. Honestly, and I mean honestly, this is a really good scenario considering what happened here. I mean, I'm just really happy that not all of my SPS was affected. I mean, these guys on the ledge are doing really well and weren't really bothered at all from the from the stress of the storm. Even uh, this guy who I added right before the storm happened, excuse the algae, uh, he's doing He's, he's been a trooper throughout all of this uh, weather-related nightmare. So that's, I mean, that's really good. I mean, it is really sad seeing these acros be affected that I grew from tiny little nubs and, you know, seeing all that growth kind of go down the drain, I guess. It's, it's, it's sad, but I mean, I really did have one of the best outcomes. So although I experienced pretty minimal loss, this experience definitely taught me a lot about how unprepared I am for an 
unexpected events. The situation really put everything into perspective about what matters, what equipment should be bought first. From here on out, I want to have a game plan for not only winter outages and catastrophes of the sort, but also summer ones. You know, here in Texas, it gets super, super, super hot. And if something were to happen to the AC or electricity then, I mean, you gotta have a backup plan for that too. You know, I don't even have a chiller. I need to find a chiller. I really want to also upgrade my generator to something that holds both propane and gas. So I don't have to be in that same situation where I'm frantically trying to find a gas station that has some gas even left. Definitely want to buy additional heaters. Something I didn't mention earlier is that my heaters were struggling to keep up the temperature. I actually took the heater for my quarantine tank in here. So I had two heaters going, but it was still really hard for them to keep up that temperature when it was 40 degrees inside my house. So I definitely want to keep many heaters just as a backup in the future if anything like this were to happen again. And making sure that I have some RODI fresh water on hand at all times. Just make that common practice. <laughs> and definitely overestimating uh, weather warnings. I mean, it hurts nobody to overestimate we weather warnings, but it can really help you. I mean, just before the storm, I was saying, you know, We've had this before. It's not a big deal, you know? I didn't anticipate, but had I taken that storm warning more seriously, I could have prepared more, stopped, stocked up on more gas, done something, you know? So definitely overestimating weather warnings, not underestimating them is something I'm definitely going to be doing in the future. But overall, I think the situation was just a really sad learning lesson for us Texas hobbyists and really for everybody in general. I think it sheds light on how important emergency planning is in this hobby. I think we rarely discuss emergency equipment. I mean, it's more considered like an afterthought. I think people who consider emergency equipment super important probably have already had a learning lesson of their own to uh, really, you know, see the importance in that. I think we should definitely emphasize the importance of having emergency equipment when we're talking about starting a tank up from scratch. Newbie guides, any kind of how to set up a saltwater tank must include emergency planning in it, you know? I saw the discussions that people had online about this event and a lot of people were saying, you know, if you were prepared, if you spent money on a generator that you would have spent on your now dead corals, you wouldn't be in this situation. I mean, really, I got that feisty in the in the comments section about this uh, event. And it's just, you only consider this stuff if you've been through that kind of experience before. There was no reason for us Texans to think that they were going to shut our power off for four days with negative temperatures. I mean, we would have, we wouldn't have believed you if you told us. I definitely think we all need to be having this discussion where we're talking about what you need to set up a, a reef tank, a saltwater tank. It's pretty much just essential as your lights, as your heaters, as everything. Because if you're ever in that situation, you're going to be really grateful that you had it. And I mean, it doesn't really hurt to own a generator or own backup controllers own this kind of equipment because if you don't ever have to use it, that's great. But if you ever do have to use it, you're gonna be so thankful for it. And it's just a kind of peace of mind. Backup heaters generator, propane and gas, ideal, transportation buckets. If you if you can't figure out the situation by yourself and you have to you have to go to another hobbyist's house that can look after your corals and your fish and the time period. Extra gas, propane, RODI water, fish holding boxes like I didn't have, battery backups, air pumps, all of these. We need to be thinking about how we can be equipped. Ideally, it would be great to have all of these, but but at bare minimum, have a plan that you can execute given that situation. For example, I mean, I had a generator, but I didn't really know how to get that generator working. And you know, when I woke up and I saw that my tank water was so cold and that everything was dying, I was truly panicked. I mean, panic started to set in and it was really difficult trying to go through the motions of doing what I had to do. Having a step-by-step -step method 
for emergency situations that you can just implement without thinking, I think goes a long way. You know that if the power goes out, what your first steps need to be, what your second steps, I mean, it's just, it's not only just a peace of mind, but you know, you're, you're, you go through the motions when you're in that kind of situation. So you don't have to panic. You don't have to, you know, kind of freak out there and lose time doing so. I think these plans for what you should do and the equipment you should keep should go beyond your location. I mean, here in Texas, we would have never, ever thought that this would happen to us. We would never thought we'd have that much snow, that cold of temperatures. We would have never foreseen it. So I think that regardless of where you live and even as far fetched as that scenario might sound to at least consider what you would do in that kind of situation, because having a plan will really save you. Another thing I want to add is have a backup of a backup of a backup in your plan. I had a generator. I did not anticipate that I wouldn't have gas, you know, so definitely have backup plans for even when your emergency plan doesn't go right. You know, you know, it doesn't take long to think about what you would do in crazy emergency situations to help your tank out. But if, or when that ever happens, you're going to be so grateful for the actions that you took beforehand. I, I was really fortunate in this situation, but many other hobbyists have not had the same luck. That is the best tank. Yeah, that fish is dead. It really devastates me seeing what happened with people's tanks online. I mean, people had all of their fish, all of their corals just gone. I can't imagine how difficult that must be. It was really stressful going through that. I mean, four days of just insane stress. You're cold, you're, you're hungry. I mean, the event in itself for a non-reefer would be really stressful, but I mean, to have your tank crash or, every, you know, lose everything at the same time is truly, truly devastating. And my heart goes out to everyone who, who lost anything during this, uh, this snowstorm. I know a lot of you who have been affected by this probably want to throw in the towel on this whole hobby right now. And I, I really don't blame you, but let's just use this as a learning experience, you know, the best that we can, prepare for the future, come back stronger than ever. You know, it's hard to see all the money and work that we've invested into this hobby just go away like that. But you know, I don't think we would have learned this lesson otherwise, I guess. Community cares so much in this hobby. You know, we've all been there and we can all sympathize. The amount of support I've seen online so far is just unbelievable. People are coming across to help us Texas reefers. I've heard of several events that are going on to give people, you know, corals and stuff and giveaways. I'm personally going to be working on a giveaway here for my Texas reefers within the next week. Stay tuned for those details. I'm going to update this video with information below, but the amount of support that I've seen in this hobby over the situation just reminds me why I love this community so much. Just remember that we can rebuild and we can rebuild stronger. Our tanks will be prepared for all of the elements moving forward. You can and will get there again. I promise take this as an opportunity to start fresh. It's a terrible situation, but it really does show shed light about parts of this hobby that are not talked enough. Namely, we need to start including emergency equipment in every discussion of essential equipment that you need for a reef tank. It should be there from the start before we even think about adding anything inside our tanks in terms of fish and coral and whatnot. We always need to be aware that it can go wrong and that we need to be prepared for that. So it's a great learning lesson despite the horribleness of this situation. It's a great learning lesson for everybody in this hobby. But my heart goes out to my Texas reefers. Let me know in the comments below what your emergency plan of action is and what kind of equipment you keep on handy for any kind of crazy weather related or you know power outage scenario. I really wanna hear what you guys have planned for when or if these situations ever come up. About. I'm going to be posting regularly again. I know I've been gone for a really long time, but I promise I will get back to normal schedule. 
so happy to be back to recording because I genuinely missed comment time, y'all. Appreciate everyone who made suggestions for what fish I should add to the new 220 gallon tank build. Thanks guys, all of these fish are beautiful and now I'm more confused about my stocking list than I ever was before. You know, it definitely was. Uh, as a total newbie to saltwater fish, this whole picking out a stocking list thing? Yeah, no one mentioned how many beautiful fish options there are out there and I'm definitely pretty overwhelmed right now, not even gonna lie. Also, a lot of y'all agreed with my plan to add basic clownfish to my tank, or as a highlight to put it, Aw's hilarious clownfish. It warms my heart to know that not everybody in this hobby has succumbed to the temptations of bougie clownfish, because you know, as you can tell, I am pretty passionate about this issue to say the least. Also, shout out to Racket for the most accurate summary of this entire YouTube channel I've seen yet. You know, I truly pride myself in creating lame videos that leave you knowing less about the hobby than when you first started watching. I'm pretty sure this is the only channel on YouTube that after watching something, you gotta binge on three hours of BRS how-to videos just to retain some sense of normalcy. And I kind of like that. <laughs>